Hello everybody, it's Donna here from Blind and Knitting. Hope you're all well and welcome. This is episode 32, yes, 32, and I, I can't, I don't know if it's the 12th or the 14th of July, June, oh my gosh, August. These months are just merging into each other frighteningly, so I, I, I yeah, I, I keep wanting to go backwards, so instead of saying, August, September, I'm saying July, June, so I'm obviously trying to push the time back. It's been uh, two two weeks uh, of, it's just been a, a really high highs and really low lows, so um, bear with me while I talk about the last couple of weeks and what's been happening. I have a FO that I have uh, finished and am proud to show. Uh, I have a whip that I'm getting quite a way through, so uh, that'll be good. I've also done some spring, spring fever has obviously got hold of me because I've been cleaning and tidying and shifting things around. So I have taped my ch changes, so I will put these in later on during the, the podcast and you can see what changes I've made. I'm hoping that it makes my crafting, podcasting, working from home much, much easier um, and quite excited about all those changes. <clears throat> it's, uh, I'm just going to have a drink of water, sorry, excuse me, uh, good old water today, nothing flash. I've had two coffees and two teas today so I probably shouldn't have anything else. But I need some dehydration is about. Yeah, so What's been happening? Well, uh, just after we, I finished my last podcast, and if you remember, I'd had the drama with Kenzie being sick. Uh, just to, uh, catch up on that, she's doing well. Uh, yeah, it has kind of knocked her, and it's taken quite its toll. Um, I think she's a lot quieter, and yeah, she just seems a little like, older. I'm gonna. She's due for a parvo shot soon, and fleeing. So I'll take her in and get, get a thorough check over just to. Just to double check on her, so yeah, it has knocked her about. Having said that, she's had to do some a lot of work over the last week, last not last week or the week before, but the week before. So it must be three weeks since I've podcasted. So she had to do a lot of work and still in recovery, really. So, she, but she is doing okay. So thank you for everyone that asked. I really did appreciate all the kind thoughts. Uh, she's my first soul child, soul mate, and but she's also. Uh, a working instrument that I, that I need so much. But the week, the week after I podcasted, I got a phone call from my nephew up in uh, Te uh, My nephew on my ex-husband's side to say that my ex-husband had passed away. Now, we were still friends, Tony and I, um, after we were, had been together for eight years. He's the father of my children. Um, he had some challenges and, and the marriage didn't work out but we still, you know, we're, we were okay with each other uh, and friends but he was the father of my children and I did love him he was, you know, I married him um, we loved each other so uh, my son came over from Australia it was really rushed because uh, Tony passed away on Monday morning and the funeral was Wednesday afternoon and Troy lives to our south of Wollongong. So it was a rush to get him over. So he flew over from Wollongong. I flew up from um, uh, Wellington to Auckland and we met here at the Auckland Airport. And my nephew came down and got us from to take us to Tikawiri. Never been to Tikawiri, so it was interesting there too to catch up on or to see a new town in New Zealand. But um, it was a sad time and the funeral uh, happened and uh, yeah, it was uh, emotional. It was it was challenging because it's quite tough supporting your children in in the midst of a uh, dare I say it. It was ambiguous. There was lots of lots of different emotions, and even my son said, you know, in in passing of someone, you usually have just the sadness, but with this one, you have anger and hurt and upset and and sadness and and you know. 
um, wishing what could have been and all of those sorts of things. And I mean, I completely understand it. I had the same situation when my dad passed away. It's, it's a really confusing time when there's been some division in the family. And so we were able to sort of do a lot of healing around that. Um, my daughter has done her healing and felt she didn't need to do that then. But um, it, that was a, a challenging but a very an emotional time but very blessing time as well so after the funeral my son and I did a road trip nothing like a good old Kiwi road trip eh, guys <laughs> and we uh, drove from Hamilton back down to Marston and it took us uh, nearly nine hours eight and a half nine hours we had to stop a few times with poor old Kenzie in the back so she spent you know nine eight nine hours in the back of the car which can't have been easy poor thing but we did try and give her some good breaks um, so we just put on great music and I had, I thought, oh, six hours because it, it said on the, um, the GPS six hour trip but because of all our stops. Six hours solid knitting, yeehaw. So when I got in the car, I got my knitting between my legs, pulled it out, started. I did four hours solid knitting, but it got too dark after that and I didn't have my little lamp thing. So um, yeah, it got too dark. This is turning out to be a long story <laughs> with some knitting. Uh, yeah, but anyway, so we came back and we had some really special time together. Troy has, hasn't been home for um, at least four or five years. So it was special time. So we cook, we stayed at Kushler's house, crashed the night there when we got home. Oh no, we came here. We came home, crashed the night here, freshened up, went back into town and had a brunch with Kushler. And then we went to the museum in town with the whole family. And then we went to Greece, which was a live show that the Warrior College students put on, which was fantastic. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Uh, and then we <laughs> went to Barbie again. I know, I know. Went to Barbie again with a group of us. I fell asleep in the midst of it because I was just shattered. But um, a couple of wines and a movie and just... Whoop, <laughs> and my damn son took a photo of me asleep. Typical. I hope that doesn't come up on the internet somewhere. Um, but I was just naked. And I'd seen the movie before, which didn't help. But it was nice to spend that family time together. And uh, yeah, it was just really special time. Troy went to the soccer with the boys and really enjoyed that. And yeah, then we said to say goodbye. Oh no, he went off and did a bit of a ticky tour himself and did some memory seeking, which he thoroughly enjoyed as well. Very special times, but it's over. He's back home, getting back into his life, and we're getting back into our world, and and uh, yeah, so hopefully we plan the next trip. That's So that's what my two weeks has been. You know, the last podcast, I had all this drama with Kenzie being sick and house-sitting and everything, and this one, I thought, please give me some respite. I, I really feel um, I've had enough. I want spring, uh, and but I have, as you know, I mental health, I'm really conscious of mental health, and so I have been very, very uh, proactive in, in taking care of my mental health so that I can, I've kept up with my work, uh, but in the times when I wasn't working, I, you know, really made it a conscious effort to take care of myself. Uh, yeah, so to the knitting, as I said, four hours solid in the car knitting, which was just fantastic. Um, I've never really been a car knitter before. I'd never even heard of it until I started watching podcasts. And I can see the Beatitudes in it. Um, having said that, I'll fill you in on, on what happened with that. So, FO, look at this. This is my FO. I'm so proud of it. I absolutely love this. Now, I watched a podcast ages ago. I made connection with the podcaster. Um, the Thoughtful Knitter, I think it is. Um, her name's Ali from Scotland. And she had one on and I fell in love with it. So this is the, uh, I'll just get my notes so I get it right. This is the Braids of Grass. And it, I started it on the 1st of July. The designer is Albiona McLaughlin. And apologies if I've uh, mispronounced that. Um, it's not in my language. Uh, 10 ply skeins abroad, vintage abroad, which is a wall I've often talked about. I really like skeins uh, vintage abroad. I started with 4 millimeter needles and then was supposed to change to 5 millimeter. I'll fill you in on that in a minute. 
and uh, so it took me exactly a month because I finished it on the 1st of August. I finished it the day before Troy came over, I think. So um, I was able to wear it. I wasn't going to wear it till after I'd podcasted, but oh, it just was exciting. And um, I absolutely love it. I'll stand up. I'll see if I can stand up. Oh, I've lost my page. Um, and show you it. I've got my, my old farm pants on, so I won't wear it with my farm pants, obviously, but hey-ho. So it's got cables that come spread out, and I did... Um, a puffy sleeve, which I'm really loving these puffy sleeves, um, which is kind of the, the in thing at the moment, sort of balloon sleeves and puffs, and uh, they're all fashion. So I did that, and you have a little bit of cable on the bottom there. The pattern isn't for puff sleeves, but uh, that's what I wanted. So I just didn't decrease, and then I suddenly did a big decrease here and added the cable. So I think it probably was just a usual fitting one with the decreases actually don't even know what the pattern was because I didn't even read it I just thought no I, I want puff sleeves so um, and I the last one I've made was my <clears throat> um what's that one called the cream one that I did just before this no wonder Stuart's going on about how many jerseys I have <laughs> um and so you start from the neck down and you do these cables all the way down and then you start increasing in between the cables to bring it out to the yoke and then just a little bit of um, increasing here to, to sort of finish a raglan part and down the bottom I wanted it nice and boxy if you can see so down the bottom it has I don't even know if I can show you I don't want to show you my belly <laughs> has cables again along the bottom which kind of looks like scallops which is quite nice actually um, it's nice and boxy nice and roomy and nice and soft it didn't start out to be this soft and open gauged <laughs> hence this is the thing that what happened and that was during when Kenzie was ill and I started with the four millimeter and then I was to change to the five millimeter uh, when you get to here and I did change, and I got down to here, and I thought, I think I told you this last time anyway. Um, that feels really loose gauge for a 5mm, and then I realised when I got much further down that it was, I think I was using a 6.5. And so I just kept on going, because I wanted it boxy, and lovely and soft, lovely and floaty. I really, really enjoyed this, and I love wearing it, um, just as much as my other one, which name has eluded me. I just pick my book up, sorry. Um, my other one, which is oh, Fairy Bouquet. There we go. Yeah, so my Fairy Bouquet was like before this, and that was a yoke down, top, top down, yoke, round yoke, um, and I absolutely loved it. I think what has helped is I spent 16 years in menopause and I couldn't even wear anything more than a sing singlet, excuse me. So, um, it's got hiccups. So, um, I, I'm now, I actually feel cold and cold's a real novelty for me. I've had 16 years where I just have not felt cold and just lived in singlets and t-shirts. I just couldn't even bear anything touching me of warmth. Um, so, yeah, and it's like it's been freezing. It, you know, everybody's saying it's freezing, and it is. It's the middle of winter over here. Um, I'm in New Zealand, by the way, if you're watching. Uh, the lower part of the North Island, which is the top island of New Zealand, and uh, it is middle of winter, and it's been freezing. Um, lots and lots of rain. Uh, we've had some snow down to the, in the hills, and but uh, it's been such a luxury for me to feel cold and then after a while I thought oh, I don't know if I like this cold thing I even yeah, I even had to wear my fingerless gloves which I, I've knit several pairs because I love fingerless gloves haven't worn fingerless gloves for years but my hands were freezing so I'm loving getting back into mint woolens again and I think that's what's given me the um, impetus to to knit these jerseys I've knit three four jerseys one two three four jerseys in a row and I've got a plan for another one um I wouldn't normally knit that many in a year but because I'm actually feeling cold and and, and I'm just loving getting back into my woolens again um I really I've almost become a bit <laughs> frantic to get these lovely jerseys done um and know that I'm going to wear them because before that I was making lots of vests and short sleeves and four ply four ply tees um 
no, I didn't do it anything like this. It just wouldn't have been the point. So, um, yeah, so it's been cold and, I've, and I wore this um, up to Tony's, uh, to the family and the funeral up there um, and just thought, gosh, this is so comfortable. You just put it on and you just know that you feel fine and it sits well, really comfy. So I highly recommend uh, a good pattern to do. I was quite confused with this, but here on how it would sit, um, it doesn't have any a short rows at the back and, and I probably could have put some in although this is the style so it actually sits just just nice I hate things too close to my neck and this is probably a good well it's a good thing I can put my fingers in there without stretching it out so it's you know probably a good centimeter and a half of space there um, which is just perfect for me um, and I really like the style it's yeah so quite unique and lovely so thank you Ellie for wearing that and uh, then me uh, and then I asked her how she found it she said it was lovely so I had her recommendation so that's my FO one month well I rocked this out I haven't said that 6.5 cool. so of course when you have an FO you're gonna cast on a whip don't you so my whip is that's the only FO I've got by the way my whip is and I, I have talked about this wool before, but I can't remember whether I'd actually cast it on. I don't think I had. So I bought, when I, last time I was over visiting my son in Wollongong, we went to a, a wool shop called uh, Finzar, and I bought a, um, a reel of colour changing wool. And I, I bought it with no decision on what to make of it. I just loved it. And it... Uh, it was bright and colourful and that's how I was feeling so I bought it um, and it's called Sheep G's and so I start, I couldn't work out what to do, oh yes I did talk about it because I didn't know what to do with the sleeves well I have started a jersey with it, um, more than started I've actually done quite a chunk of this jersey so I decided to mail it with uh, a um, undyed skeins 8 ply pure wool so it is mild. I have used the pattern Calliope by uh, Space Tree Co. And I'll, I'll get the details for you. So, uh, oh, no, other way. Calliope, C A L L I O P E. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that's how it's spelt. I have done quite a few modifications, so I'll talk about those. But it's in a Space Tree Co. pattern, a paid for pattern. It, I've, it's a, I've done it with eight ply un, undyed wool. So um, you buy these, oh here it is, buy these hanks. So for indie dyes and that who want who are doing dyeing, and that was my goal, um, and I might do that over Christmas with the grandies, is dye some wool. But I figured... I just couldn't work out what to use this wool for, so this is what it's, so marling, I thought, I'll marl it in Knitter Jersey. Uh, so it's, I've done size 3, so 47 inch, because I want, I really want a sweatshirt, I want a casual with jeans around home, or just going, you know, for a coffee at a girlfriend's or something, um, nice sweatshirty, loose with jeans jersey. Uh, so I did a 47 inch, so I am a 44 under here, so that should give me, you know, a reasonable amount of a positive ease, uh, I'm hoping. That's with positive ease, 47, so it's 3 inches of positive ease. I usually go between 2 and 4 inches, however, what I've done is it's supposed to be with 4, uh, four millimeter needles, and I've done it with 4.5 for the neck for the ribbing and five millimeter for here because the wool's eight the pattern is for eight ply the wool is eight ply but then the um sheep g's round one which is color changing i'm not even showing you properly am i let's see if you can see that so it's fading so it's not only mal but it's fading down into and it's we're up to the lime green so it's gone so that all the red tones, oranges, yellow, now lime greens, and then it's going into sort of more darker bright green. 
should show you that. And then, and then we'll go into um, the, the bright greens, into the blues and the purples. Hopefully, I'll have enough to get, I'd like to make sure that I get to the end in the purple. So, mild and it's a fade. So, what, so what I decided to do, because this is supposedly a four ply, but it's a really thin four ply. I ha and I tell you, okay, I hadn't swatched, so it may it may swell. Um, very thin. It's almost what I would consider a lace weight. Um, so I put it. The, uh, so supposedly that would make twelve ply, four ply, and eight ply. Um, sort of Aaron Wolf's did. That's why I put my needle size up. So I went up to instead of a five. I've done, no instead of a four point five. I've done a five millimeter. Um, so that it'll be, uh, it'll accommodate the thicker, thicker wool, and it is. It's quite thick. It's lovely, uh, but it's also soft. Um, that that this um, this wool here is so soft. Uh, yeah, I think I'll I'll use it again um, without dyeing it. Uh, so I'm quite excited about this. So, but the Calliope, so the modifications, the Calliope, and this is because I did this. I cast this on around, around the time I found out about Tony, my ex-husband, and uh, so I cast it on, got cocky, didn't I, did the rib, and then it said increase and then do more 2 by 2 rib, and I thought, oh, I've only done a one by one rib, not a 2 by 2 and the rib is supposed to come down 3, that 3, you increase in there, and then you increase in there. So you do a two by two, and then you do a no, you do a two by one, and then you do a two by two with that's your increases, and then you do a three by two, so that, that that's your increases in your yoke. So Donna just thought, ah, oh well, I'll find out what the increases were, slap them in, and didn't do any more of that. So the Calliope pattern isn't exactly. Have I got the pattern for you to show you? No, uh, because I've been cleaning the rooms out, I haven't got it, sorry. It's quite a wide yoke, sits down, and it's supposed to have a very 1950s vintage feel about it. It's definitely a jersey that I'm going to do, because I've seen that done. Um, when I went to Cannes last year, The uh, one of the young women had it on, and that's why I knew about the pattern, because I, I just fell in love with the shape and the style and the, the vintage look. Uh, it's got a lot of rib in the arms, and a lot of rib on the bottom but basically what I've done is just used the bones of this pattern and not the um, the, the detail so that I can just have a plain sweatshirt use this as the bones but hey I think that's going to look quite cool now I didn't know what to do with the sleeves uh, so what I have done is well I, I mean obviously I'm getting through the bottom of it now that's <laughs> they do say that stripes and fades are addictive and you say are because i keep saying oh just one more color or oh, just one more color um so i'm getting through it quite quickly um i think what i'll do is just do plain cream sleeves and when i get to the bottom hopefully to the lilac i'll do a plain cream band at the bottom rib band at the bottom so that that'll tie those two together with the band at the top so that there'll be some you know, sort of something to cohesive about it. Um, but yeah, I'm quite looking forward to it. It's quite bright. I'm not sure it's really my my colour scheme. But for a fun winter sweatshirt for the weekends, that's going along really nicely. So that's been my main whip, really, because um, I've been staying in motels with Troy and travelling and sleeping on, at my daughter's and so I haven't really done any other knitting bar that, bar finishing this and um, concentrating on that. So, and what I wanted to say was, you know, when you're stressed and you're not thinking clearly, and you, and I did get cocky on it with the with the casting on. I just I really wanted it. I really wanted the Calliope pattern. It started mucking up the neckline from the get go, um, but thought no. So I added the um, the increases carried on really loved it thought yes i'm actually going to really like this so that's when i started doing the car knitting <laughs> when i got home and put it on my my sewers model to find out whether it's going to fit 
I can't, I can't really work out the front, the back and the sides. I thought, what the heck's going on here? It, it just was wrong. And and, I, and so, I <laughs> you know what I'd done? I'd done five sleeve raglan rows. So I had five. I don't know whether I thought I was going to grow another <laughs> arm or something. But I must have, yeah, instead of doing four raglan uh, increase, you know, one, two at the front, two at the back. I had one right at the centre of the back as well. So I'd done the, almost the whole yoke. I was just about ready to um, divide for the sleeves and I had to frog it. That, that, I mean, I don't mind little mistakes, and, and but this was, this was a big one, having a raglan um, shape right down the middle of the back. I kind of pretended it was a zip or something, but... No, so I had to frog it. So I know I've done a lot now, but I would have, I probably would have had the body finished it if I hadn't had to frog the whole yoke. Thankfully, it was quite easy to to pick up. So it had a lot of short rows in the back. That's so that's where I went wrong. It, I'd done all the short rows, and I had I, d I forgot to remove the beginning of row marker and put my two my four markers for my raglans on. So hence, every time I went round, and I had a small circumference, because I was using what I had in the car, um, a small circumference circular needle, so it was clumped together. Never thought to count that I had five markers instead of four. So every time I had a marker, I did my um, increases. <laughs> That's where I went wrong. Anyway, I picked it. It's big needles, and uh, so it wasn't too big a drama. Anyway, that was, so that's my um, heavily modified Calliope. Uh, I do recommend you have a look at that pattern. It's it's gorgeous. Um, it is a plain, pl plain, but it's got some beautiful shaping and some beautiful detail, as a space trico does do, sort of those very stylish sort of styles. Um, so I am definitely going to knit one without heavy modifications. The only other whip I have is my socks. And I still haven't done anything on them. It's funny because I thought, oh, I'll take this for car knitting. But I was up to the heel. And because I'm still a relatively new sock knitter, I've done half of the flap at the back. Uh, so I'm up to the finishing that and doing the, uh, the gusset. I wasn't really prepared to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine what that would have been like if I'd done that and, and done um, d mucked up the um, markers on this? I would have had a two-footed, double-footed pair of socks or something. <laughs> I came home and I said to Stuart, I think I'm, you know, I've knit this and I've, I'm assuming I'm going to grow an arm. <laughs> what a dork. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, that's my whip. And that's my uh, FO, uh, you know, typical knitter. I've got a few other whips that um, are just languishing. And so when Stuart made the comment of how many jerseys I have, I was like, oh, oh, oh how dare he? Uh, but then I thought, oh, I actually do have a lot of jerseys. Uh, too, too many to fit in my shelves. Um, and, but I don't want to get rid of them because I, you know, I, I did make a pact with myself some time ago. If I pull something out of my wardrobe or my shelves and I feel slightly uncomfortable with it or it's just not the right colour or it's starting to get old, get rid. Um, so I'm kind of at the stage where everything in my wardrobes and my shelves I love to wear. And so I don't want to get rid of any of them. Um, so I think I'll have to start. Well, and it, we are coming into spring, which will be helpful because you don't want to knit these big jerseys in spring. I think I'm going to have to start knitting for others and knitting for grandchildren. Um, I've always really only knit for myself because I always feel there's a pressure knitting for someone else with time and fit, and um, which I wasn't didn't really want to put on myself. But grandchildren um, for camping and things, you know, th those are nice, easy, quick knits. So. I think what I'll do is I'll start knitting the kids some, some camping warm um, jerseys for next year. Uh, I do, so I have some more that I have already bought. Um, I've got two jerseys, two cardigans on the plan, um, and I do need 
a couple more cardigans. Um, as I say, I've started feeling the cold now, but um, in the summer, spring, it'll be nice to have a couple of cardigans because I haven't had any for years. Uh, and I have a, what else do I have? I have a couple of cardigans planned and I think I have a vest planned. So those are things that will be in the middle of the season. So I'll get those done, but I definitely have to really... <laughs> Next time I knit a big jersey, I'm just going to have to really consider, do I really need this? Um, or do I build another room on the back of the house? Because <laughs> I don't have a walk-in wardrobe. I don't have the luxury of that. I have a very small wardrobe, very small house. Um, and I've been spring cleaning, and I'm going to put a video of my spring cleaning in now. So that... You can work, you know, I hope you enjoyed that. So that's just giving you a show of what I've been up to. I'd, I have had, I've been blessed that I've had some family live with us for many years. So firstly, when we built this house, we had Stuart's daughter living with us uh, for about three years. Three, these seem to go in three year lots. Uh, and then she left home. And then I had uh, Stuart's dear mother, who I just simply adored, come and live with us. And she passed away. Uh, after three years and then we had June uh, Stuart's sister June's daughter come and live with us for about three years so I've had six years of family living in this small house which has been wonderful and no regrets just re thoroughly loved having them but what I meant is what it meant is that I never had my craft area everything was crammed thrown into a wardrobe and packed up into this wardrobe so that when you opened it it was like you had to hold everything so it didn't fall out um, and if I've, and I, it kind of limited me on my crafts. So um, Heather's been gone for nearly a year now, and I've got spring fever. And so that's why I've done all these changes. And I have, I'm so excited about having my own space. I, it was so easy to come in here and do this podcast. I'm hoping that I can just come in and pick up a project or whatever I need when I need so really exciting and I'm looking forward to getting back into my sewing as well um I think I've said before but that was my first career well my first career really was I, did, I spent six years working in a furnishing shop um I was always a sewer furnishing shop and so I made a lot of sewing out of furnishing materials um and learned a lot about fabrics and all of those sorts of things then I went to Benina um, so I was a Benina saleswoman and sewer. I used to make <coughs> lots of the crafts and sewing, and uh, but sold sewing machines mostly. So that was a big career for me. When I was pregnant with Kushla, I helped out at quite a few, uh, a couple of the fab local fabric fabric shops in town. Uh, so my first real career was around fabric and sewing and furnishings, and so you know that's kind of been my start of my craft or well, not start because the start was with mum and dad and they were both crafters and knitters and and you know I was really lucky that I had that in my world and then of course I went into social work uh, preschool I started preschool teaching managed a preschool and then went into uh, in social work part-time social work and now full-time social work and owning my own business so um I've gone from fabrics, crafts and fibres to uh, mental health well-being, uh, yeah, which is a great segue to the mental health thing. I, I was thinking about that, um, what to say, and because Heather's been gone a year, and I kept thinking, why have I not got my mo mojo to get these rooms done? I, we just, I kept just thinking, oh, that'd be great in a craft room, and I'd pile it up, or... Um, oh, you know, this will be great. And, and my ironing board became a dumping ground. So, you know, you couldn't see over my ironing board. And my sewing desk was so cramped with stuff that I, I, so I didn't do anything because I'd walk into it like this. And so I was thinking about the mental health tip. So what helped me do this is I was watching a podcast the other day and there were two things that she said that really hit home. She said the first thing and this is the one that I want you to sort of carry with you, is motivation never comes when you need it. And it's so true. You know, you can sit there and think, oh, I need motivation to do this. 
uh, and it never comes when you need it. So that was the one that really hit home. But the second one was, if you, if in order to do something, to get something done, to stop that procrastination, she recommended counting five, four, three, two, one, and the one will get you to do it because there's nowhere to go from that. So I tried it. Well, there is somewhere to go after one. It's bugger this. <laughs> So I don't know how many times I spent the day laying in bed going, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, bugger this. So <laughs> there is, she found, there is somewhere you can go after one. But this morning I wrote, for some reason, so I did get the motivation and I did get the five, four, three, two, one. And I got up and I thought, right, I am doing these rooms today. Hence the video you've just seen. So, uh, yeah, just... A takeaway that motivation doesn't come when you want it. You know, you can sit waiting for motivation for forever, really. <laughs> um, and sometimes those tips don't work at first. But the 54321 did work for me eventually. So that's the mental health chat today about getting up. And, you know, we're all going to get the spring, the spring bug now. Um, and, you know, it's starting to get a little warmer. The days are getting a little uh, lighter. My chooks are starting to lay again. Oh, they've got their feathers back. They're starting to look well. And I'm getting, I've got 10 chooks. I'm getting six to eight eggs in the last few days. So rock on, chooks. And my veggie garden's looking, it's t clean and tidy. And I've planted it all out. No, I, I usually winter down my garden and don't plant anything but this time I'm really trying to learn what I can grow in this garden new garden here <coughs> um, so I planted it out thinking leeks are no good winter leeks three times I've tried leeks and obviously there's something about our climate that doesn't work here so I'm trying to learn what I can can't grow pollies and brassicas and all are doing well um, minimal growth but they're still flora you know ticking along um, yeah, so spring is on the way. Um, yeah, feeling a little bit more motivated. See, I've got the motivation now. It's a bit like that um, gestalt, no, not gestalt, a zygonic effect that I talk about where our bodies don't like, our brains don't like unfinished jobs. And so you use the zygonic effect to your advantage by having jobs where you can just do one bit, one bit, one bit, and then your brain doesn't like the unfinished parts, and all of a sudden you've done a, a whole lot. So, um, yeah, I've talked about that in other podcasts, so if you want to find out, I think it was quite early in the piece, and I talked about the zygonic effect, which is interesting as well. So, let me check my note. I, so, my plan, my planned knitting planned knitting is my next cast on and I think I'll do it soon because I'm on the simple stuff oh, I had it here where is it I haven't got it with me too dumb is I'm going to knit Stuart uh, the anchors my boyfriend's jersey I've knit myself an anchors short sleeved lilac dare I get him to test the size on that he won't put lilac on <laughs> if he does I wouldn't be able to take a photo that's for sure um but I'm going to knit him the anchors. I've got this beautiful, again, it's the skeins uh, vintage board. I think it's an eight ply, this one. Um, this is skeins as well. Um, I must say, I do like that wool. It's, it's crisp and woolly, but it's not prickly. Um, and it's, it's easy for me to knit with my sight. Uh, hence the light colours that I do knit. But I've got a lovely, and Stuart picked the colour. It's a really nice stone sort of stone creamy grey um, colour so I'm quite looking to, forward to doing that uh, and he won't put any pressure on me because he, he doesn't need to do these he's got just as many piles as I have <laughs> um, but I'm looking forward to doing that for him uh, and then I'll start on some grandchildren's knits so that's my next knits uh, have a sip of my drink my water quench my mouth and then I'll talk about acquisitions can't say acquisitions with a dry mouth Right, acquisitions. Um, a little while ago, I said that I had done an, a huge month at work and I'd got quite a big pay pay for that month. Uh, it's contracted counselling work I do for EAP services. Uh, so I had a massive, massive month and 
um, so that meant that I got a little bit of extra money. So I thought I would shout myself, everybody kept talking about chow goes. I thought I'd shout myself a set of chow goes, which I talked about in the last uh, podcast. So I did set by myself a set of chow goes. I'm pretty sure I've shown them. Here's my set here. Well, maybe I haven't. I, can't, I actually can't remember. Sorry, guys. It's been a hell of a couple of few weeks. So I shouted myself the full set. It's quite a, it's quite a, um, you know, it's quite a lot of money. So, um, you know, I wouldn't be doing this normally. It was because I just had that extra bit of pay. So I did shout myself the full set. And they're five inch, which uh, I did love my Knit Pros. I, I use Knit Pros. Oh, there's a gap there. What's missing there? Oh, I suppose what I'm knitting. Duh. <laughs> um, I do like my Knit Pros. I know some people don't. And because I started circular knitting on Knit Pros, I was used to the, the cords. But now that I've used Chow Goes and their cords, yes, I can see why people love Chow Goes. Um, I don't, the, the, the zip annoys me on, the, on this, though, I have to say. It does, doesn't slide very well. Uh, so I can see the, the advantages with the Chowgu cords because when I cast on my uh, Calliope around here, I was able to do it and it just didn't twist. Um, my knitting didn't twist. You know, I didn't have to keep untwisting all my knitting to try and join it together. So that was a game ch changer. Well done, uh, Chowgu's. And I'm really enjoying knitting with them. Um, as I said, I, yeah, it's what you learn with you. Pardon me, you, you, you're used to, but um, thoroughly enjoying that. So I still, I still, um, I had put a, an amount in my head as what I would shout myself. And so I still had a little bit of money left from that, from buying this. Quite an investment. But because I am trying to be a lover of socks, Oh, I bought these from Eskdale, Eskdale Yarns up in um, Napier. Uh, and the reason I went there is because they've had such a tragic time up there with the flooding. And, that, and I really wanted to support someone who had been through some pretty rough times by um, purchasing from her. So thank you. I don't know the lady's name, sorry, but thank you to Eskdale Yarns for that. But I did have a little bit of coin left, and so and I am really trying to find the love of sock knitting, and I now see the beatitudes of chowgu. So I thought, all right, Donna, shout yourself, it's all or nothing. Shout yourself a full set of sock um, circular knitting minis, which I've done. So it comes in a little pack like this, chowgu pack. Oh, by the way, Trudy, my sister, gave me a gift for um, house sitting. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> Says Donna, uh, and it's a key ring, but I, I've used it just to pretty up my little my little container. So thank you, Trudy. Uh, so I brought these from um, Lisa from Unwind and Knit, and. It is the full set of minis. And they are one inch because I are two inch, are they? Two inch. Yeah. So huge investment. But I was thinking about it the other day and thought, well, should I invest this sort of money? And I pulled it out my old needles, my my um straight needles, and I had I've got them in. It's it's a wine carry wine bottle carrier, and it's got two wine bottle um, zip up uh, with a handle, and hard, long needles fit perfectly. So if you ever want to store your long needles, wine wine carriers are good. So I've got all of my size eight in up, my bigger needles on one side, and all my size eight and down my thin needles in the other and a few crocheting hooks and you know the things we used to use 20 years ago 30 40 years ago knitting and I pulled them out and I had two massive handfuls of needles and I thought I've paid for these over the years 
these have been such an investment in everything I've knit for my children. You know, they have paid for themselves over well over the years, and they would have cost me, you know, hundreds of dollars. So, so, and I work hard, so I was, I, I allowed myself to be okay with it. Um, I'm not a great sort of big spender, I suppose. <laughs> so for me, it was, it was like, ah, ah. yes, I will, no, I won't, yes, I will, no, I won't. Um, and then I thought, no, bugger it, I'll do it. So, um, quite excited about using those. Uh, and, yes, yeah, so I bought those ones off Lisa. I also thought, in for a dollar, in for, what's the start saying? In for a penny, in for a pound. If I'm going to do it, do it right. Um, and then I don't have to worry about anything at all. Oh, I can't do that up. Yeah, I don't like these Chalgo zip things. They're not, not particularly user-friendly, are they? And of course they have black zips as well, which isn't great for me. So I also just topped it up with, um, oh, I've got sticking plaster on my finger, excuse me, with some fat um, of the, what are they called, just the cords and some medium size. I only had narrow ones, little thin ones, and they're not, they're not good for chunkier wool. And as I'm getting, losing my sight, I'm, I've realised that I won't be knitting too much more of the really fine stuff so I need some chunkier cords to be able to do my arms and things so I paid for those as well um, from Lisa and what and also one thing that annoys me the most and what I usually use is rubber bands and I suppose they would work on chow goose because they're steel or I think the steel are aluminium what are they I don't even know what they're made of the metal um, but uh, what I normally use is on my chow goes is those little rubber bands that the kids make the little bracelets and that with, and I rub, rub around them, which is great. But they can they can uh, snap the needles because they're wood. So I have snapped a couple of needles with using those. So I decided to shout myself some stoppers. Um, and I've, so I've got bought quite a. It's a set. So with some big ones and some little ones and they're in a lovely little cardboard box um, from Lisa from Unwind and Knit with me down in Christchurch. Uh, Lisa came to our retreat, if you remember me talking about it. Lisa also kindly gave, when you purchase some, I'm not sure what the criteria is of the purchase, but when, you, when I purchased those, I got a free shawl pattern um, from Lisa as well so yeah thank you Lisa that's lovely I'll um, knit that up at some stage uh, yeah because that was the other thing I thought no more jerseys and things let's do some accessories and get, I love my shawls always we I've always worn shawls love shawls I'm uh, quite happy to knit shawls and some more fingerless gloves and Believe it or not, I actually wore my hat the other day, so I might even get into hat wearing now that I'm feeling the cold. So that was my purchases. Really excited about all those. Um, I feel like now that I've got my craft room all set and I've got all my set needles set and um, I can just do something without worrying about whether I've got the, the right stuff. So the last thing I wanted to talk about knowing me it won't be the last but let's try is um i do wardrobe toolbox with uh, libby johnson and she did a yarn swap and i missed out on the initial yarn swap but there must have been another lady that missed out as well and so she uh messaged me and emailed me and said do you want to still do it because there's another lady and so i said yes so we did the yarn swap so uh the criteria was to you no, know, so how they do it is I've never done one before, so I quite enjoyed it. You get a little questionnaire and you write things like <clears throat> the uh, ply of wool you enjoy knitting, some color choices that you really like, you know, your mojo colors, and what else did we have to say? 
they were the main ones really yeah so um and so you put those in and then you sent they so you i got a lovely lady uh i'm hoping i can say her name uh, but you won't be able to find out who she is because i can just give you so it was amanda um and she's from aussie so good luck finding amanda in australia because <laughs> i'm not going to tell you any more than that but um so i sent off a oh and you had to do a hundred grams um, a little notion something and something specific to where you're from so i she liked four ply and i can't remember the colors it was blues and burgundies i think from memory um and i had this lovely hank of self-striping wool that i bought some time ago to knit socks with and i never got round to it but it was such a pretty one and not but not my colors but perfect for her colors and i think i put another little something in there like a um i think i put one of lisa's unwinded knit little um sock yarn in and i had a mug that my niece had made that had a funny knitting uh saying on it a coffee mug and i had it on it um it's my party and i'll knit if i want to so i put that in and a little sheep marker notion um marker because i'm a farmer we've got a stud sheep stud and i thought that was nice to put something natural in so i sent that off and waited for mine and i got mine the other day so so chuck much more than i anticipated let me pull the box up oh. i know what i forgot to say as well the lovely lady at eskdale sent me when i uh, ordered the chow goes and i can't read it to tell you her name so but she sent me a soak bath soak uh, isn't that lovely and she also sent one for my friend which i'm assuming she means is kenzie um it's on my lap somewhere but another one that says for your friend so i'm assuming that's for kenzie um yeah so thank you for that that's a, quite a nice little surprise i must find out what your name is i can't read the label but hey ho so this is my parcel that i got for my share firstly first opened up oh the most beautiful uh, bag it's just the prettiest i'd love a duvet in that i love those country cottage looks with um one thing i am going to do is change these curtains and put the burgundy ones back in our bedroom and the bring the cream ones in here so i've got light for working with crafts in here and um, i'll go back to country cottage but that's just beautiful i don't know whether she's made it herself or it's bought doesn't seem to have a tag on it um it's got zip zip pockets inside oh it's just gorgeous just just gorgeous and it's quilted so that blew me away for a start then i got a skein of dream fire artesian yarn merino nylon so it's an eight ply um, and so i could make some um DRK 8 plus socks out of that and then a couple of little minis and these were from Dreamfire as well I think she said that they were a friend down the road so a couple of little 8 ply minis oh, wait but there's more then I got I was starting to feel rather sort of oh there's three three little minis that's another little mini burgundy one i think it's burgundy yep um a little parcel and i thought oh gosh what's this soap the most exquisite handmade soap and i love because i love handmade soap i usually buy mine from uh, rain from i think she calls herself rain soaps actually because i like her one that is um no, I've lost the name. Uh, I love how she's whoever's made this has made it all sort of chunky up and down rustic on the top. 
and it is a lavender and lemongrass soap and my apologies I can't read it but if you can see the label uh, and what I'll do is I'll put it down in my notes as well so that um, it is really it's beautiful beautiful soap so there's more <laughs> just keep I love just keep going and going these are little um, stitch counters, beautiful homemade wooden ones, and they're on a, a wooden tag, so they've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 on them. And then there are row counters. Oh no, these are like SSK, oh, see, I didn't realise that, SSK, knit two together, it's got little um, what you do, oh that would be handy. Yarn overs. <laughs> How cool is that? So they've got all of those written on them. And again, that's on a beautiful little wooden tag. The little wooden. And they are also from Dreamfire. It's the logo. So um, if this person has a website or something, I'm going to look it up. Because beautiful, beautiful stuff. Then there was the cutest little stitch marker, two stitch markers, Dreamfire again, so beautiful, beautiful little stitch markers, really elegant, and I'll be able to see those on things too, so that oops, will be grand, and then <laughs> I've drunk one of these, there were two coffees, two cappuccinos, I think they're the one with the latte, and I had it last night, <laughs> But there's more. I was actually gonna. I've wanted to try this uh, blood orange tea for a long, long time. So thank you for that. Um, I'm gonna try that this afternoon, actually. And black currant, blueberry and black currant. That sounds yummy too. I do like me a herbal tea. So and they're red seal. So is there anything else? Oh, it just it just blew me away. The the um. Just absolutely stunningly beautiful. And thank you so, so much. I never, ever expected so much. And she's written, she's given me a lovely, lovely card. With, you know, I hope you enjoy it. And that it was a good friend of mine who does, who uh, does the soap and the creating. So I will definitely put uh, a link to the Dreamfire and the soap down in the notes because they're stunning uh, in Australia so if anyone from Australia or if they do online shopping uh, you could do that but that was the, the uh, yeah, I felt really blessed so thank you so I'm definitely in for yarn sharing I thought that was super nice oh here's the one from um, Eskdale for your friend uh, I don't know if it's a doggy one. It's probably a human one, but Kenzie won't mind. <laughs> or I can use it sit beside her and say, oh, this is lovely to soak in, Kenzie. <laughs> so thank you. Well, well, there we go. So as I say, it's been uh, it's three weeks with some very big highs. As you can see, I just feel so blessed. Uh, just the knitting community. Uh, I have thoroughly enjoying my knit groups and, my, and uh, making some lovely friends from there. Um, it, you know, we do we meet Tuesdays every week, and you know they're very special friends now. And we also meet once a month, so it's a group of us that come to that one, and also more people. My my knitting community is. I'm just I just feel really blessed by it all and I uh, want to thank you if you're watching please thumbs up please subscribe <laughs> and help me spread the love um, but thank you if you are watching because I do really feel quite blessed by all of my friends and our knit groups and um, we've got Can Can I'm not sure what it is coming up in a couple of weeks so uh, that is Knit August Nights, which is run by Skeins um, up in Napier. So we've got four days up in Napier 
um, I'm going up with Vicky, one of my knitting friends from my knit groups. And I went with Vicky last year as well. And But also Sandy and Tony and I think Bernadette and some of the other lovely ladies from our group are going up as well. So we're going to spend four days up in Napier uh, with lots of lessons and lots of mo uh, motivation and lots of inspiration. And I'm hoping... I've, I've done my spendies, but I have put a little bit away for some, a little bit of spending as well. Because last year I bought that stunning uh, lemon alpaca that I made my petite knits feast out of. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking that there might be a little bit of spending as well. Anyway, that's it from me. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Uh, I'm going to now go. I'm going to pack up this. I'm going to now go and lay on my bed and read a book slash sleep for an hour or so and have a little rest because I have been shifting furniture for the last two days. Feeling a little jaded. And then I'm going to go and shovel some poo in my chook house, which is a job I love to do. Brings me back down to earth, keeps me humble and keeps me my feet on the ground. Uh, so I'm going to go and shovel some poo in the chook house and then make some mince, good old mince for tea, and that's our evening. Can chat to you next time. I'll have some news about Khan after that. Bye for now. I have taken over the boys' bedroom, Harley and Braden's, and I now have my knitting and podcast chair, some of my wall stash, and we all know that we've got to be honest and say it's some of, and my books and my projects. That little chair down there, my father made that for me when I was about two. So it's 60 years old. I've covered it, recovered it. It's the cutest little chair. And my view when I'm in my craft slash podcast slash everything room. <laughs> <laughs> up here my Barbie doll oh my gosh it shows me how many memories I have um, that's my Barbie doll my mum brought me over 50 years ago and I've kept it I get a panic attack when the kids pick it up <laughs> um, my sewing box that my mother gave me many 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 years ago and Trudy my sister gave me the dear old lady with the knitting needles as a thank you gift this is a Oh, that's fallen down. Fabulous gift idea here. So simple. A measuring tape and they have photocopied old patterns. And it's quite they're quite small, so you can see them by the side of my scale of my hand. Uh, so they've scaled them down and folded them and made a, like a freeze. And I just love it. Uh, my sewing pile down there. So that's where all my to do sewing is going and in that bin is a whole lot of materials for future planning all my woolens that I wear Stuart had the cheek to tell me I needed to clean them out and I said I can't throw these out some of them are 30 years old <laughs> um, but they, they never and all my sewing gear and my this is all paper paper store uh, for paperwork you know like making cards and that's a recycled paper making kit there I'm keen to start that at some stage um, I've done some paintings, so one of those is full of painting stuff. Uh, not that I'm the best, but you know, all my crafts are all in. Oh, I'm so pleased. It's all in order. My sewing machine, my office gear, my this is my drawer that has my journal and my podcasting book and my knitting journal. And that was that falling down, wasn't it? And all of the things I need for podcasting and journaling and writing up my wares. Down here is all my knitting needles and notions and my scarf bin, which is just when I want, want to grab a scarf, I just do that. Yeah, so that is, well, the boys still get an area to sleep. They're so lucky. And look, dare I say it, I've actually got, look, two shelves there, empty. Ooh, shelf up the top there, empty. Uh, that's all my belly dancing gear so I, I now don't belly dance anymore so I have to work out what to do with that and also it's all my family photos so can you imagine this as sort of the rogues 
gallery. Sort of, I thought I'd put up all of our family photos up there for the kids. Can go off to, and I love that. And this is Stuart and I in our fancy dress disco for my fiftieth. So, so this is the children's room or one of the kids' room. Usually the girl Kiara. And so now I have put the toys in there. Um, look at that view. It's my favourite view at the house. Not so pretty weather, but still a beautiful view. So that is now the toy room. 